Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video today. So in this video, I'll be reading through an interview with Patricia McPherson from the Knight Rider Annual that I uh, did a quick read through in my previous video. If you want to see that video, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. When Patty McPherson, who played Bonnie, the computer expert, in the first series of Knight Rider left the show, the fans were really depressed and let the studio know in no uncertain terms what they thought of the decision. I think we were all surprised at the worldwide reaction we received, she says, although it was quite flattering to realise that I was that popular. I suppose a lot of it is down to the fact that when people start watching a show, they get used to the people in it and don't like change. But Rebecca Holden, who took over from me for the next season, was good and she developed her own fan following once the fans had adjusted to things. Now Patty is back as Bonnie, playing with the microchips and making sure that Michael Knight and Kit are both functioning as well as they should be. Rebecca Holden is looking for pastures new where she can develop her talents as an actress, singer and dancer. It was just like a reunion party when I walked back onto the set, says Patty. People assumed that there was this bitchy rivalry between Rebecca and me because she filled my shoes, but that's not the case at all. She's a really nice lady and we got on tremendously well. She wished me good luck when she left and I hope things go well for her. As Bonnie, Patty's first job when she walked back onto the film set was to find out just what they had planned for Kit. I was a bit surprised that they were destroying him and rebuilding a dash, but it's more exciting than ever now. As Bonnie, I have to do a kind of Humpty Dumpty job on him and recover all the pieces and put him back together again. It was also great meeting David and Edward Mulher after the break. We get on like family, and that goes for the crew as well as the cast. David and Edward told me that they wanted me back, and perhaps that had something to do with it too. We're lucky because we all mix socially and have parties and things like that. It's not quite a bye-bye, I'm pleased to be off home affair. There was also a pile of fan mail waiting for her. You'd be surprised how much of it says things like, it's nice to see a woman computer technologist for a change. In other words, a woman in a show with brains, who isn't just a decoration or love interest. And it's feathers right in it, not the women's libbers. She admits that sometimes things can get a bit tough before the cameras, especially when she's involved in some of the heavy action. I remember there was a scene I had to do once I was supposedly unconscious, and this other guy had to pick me up and put me over his shoulder before carrying me off somewhere. Well, everything went according to plan, and then he suddenly tripped on a camera cable, or something like that, and we both fell over. I nearly was unconscious then, Luckily, nothing like that has happened since. For three days every week, Patty has to leave her home and head for the studio and not return until late. I guess we usually start filming around 6.30am and often I'm not home until midnight. Everybody works hard. But there are quite a few moments when I'm not wanted and so I sit around the studio doing a lot of reading. I love books and also talking to people. I spent hours mingling with members of the crew and chatting to them. It's quite fascinating learning all about the stuff that goes behind the cameras. I often manage to nip off and do some shopping for a couple of hours if a scene doesn't require my presence. So things are pretty interesting for me. Patty has certainly led a varied life which saw her traveling around Europe a lot as a kid. I was born in Northwest Washington state, she says and my father was in the military. That meant we moved around a lot and I went to loads of different schools. Most of my time was spent in France and you'd expect me to be able to speak the language, but I'm not fluent in it at all. Because of this nomadic existence, it meant that my best friends were my brothers. It was difficult to be friends with anyone else because as soon as I did, we'd be moving somewhere and I had to start all over again but my brothers, being with me, were constant companions. We've always got on terrifically. I always loved acting as a kid, but not with any intention of doing it for a living. I didn't even know you could. 
I used to make up stories a lot and do little plays. It was only when I went to school in San Diego that I met actors and actresses and did some acting in college. I got myself an acting coach too, but really it was commercial art that fascinated me and I majored in that at college. From there I went to work for a Los Angeles magazine whilst doing my acting classes on the side and ended up doing advertising. From there it was commercials before I took the plunge into full-time acting. When she isn't appearing in Knight Rider, Patty involves herself in ceramics, making pottery and things like that. I've even enrolled at their college so that I can use their equipment and also learn lithography, she says. It's the logical next step, I guess, she says. But at the moment, I'm quite happy playing with the microchips and keeping Kit in shape. So there you go, folks. That is the interview from the 1980s with Patricia McPherson. Um, if you like this video and this little insight into Knight Rider, click on like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.